What's going on and welcome back to my channel, What in the World of Data? Here I'll give you a crazy tutorial on did America try to nuke the moon? If you're new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any new information that you need to be informed about regarding worldly data or news. Any links will be down in the description below regarding the matter in the tutorials, so let's get started. A study of lunar research flights was a top secret plan developed in 1958 by the United States Air Force known as Project A119. There are two reasons behind this. One, the goal was to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon for the United States will hope to get some answers to some of the mysteries in planetary astronomy and astrology. The second reason, which is probably the real reason, was to nuke the moon in a particular spot and not in a lunar crater. The flash of explosion of lights would be big enough to have been faintly visible to the people on Earth with their naked eye. But why such a crazy tactic? When it came to the space race, the Soviet Union took the lead in the launch of Sputnik 1 on October 4th, 1957. And the United States also wanted to boost their domestic morale to show them they still had the capabilities when it came to outer space. The Soviet Union was also shown advanced technology and the United States was shown destruction of something. Okay. So the Project A119 was never carried out due to the fact it risk outweighed its benefits per the Air Force officials in January 1959. It was only then they finally had a light bulb moment and decided a moon landing would be more popular achievement in the eyes of the American and international public alike. But in the meantime, newspapers were reporting a rumor that the Soviet Union was also planning to detonate a hydrogen bomb on the moon. According to press reports in late 1957, news reports of the rumored launch included mentioning of targeting the dark side of the Terminator or the Twilight Zone. Project A119 would also consider this boundary as well as the target for the explosion. It was also reported that a failure to hit the moon would likely result in the missile returning back to Earth. But did this stop their research? Of course not. So let's check out what else they had up their sleeves. A well-known physicist, Leonard Riefel, led a 10-member team that was assembled at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. There, they would study the potential visibility of the explosion, the benefits to science it would have, and the implication for the lunar surface. Among the members of the research team was astronomer Gerard Cooper and his doctoral student, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan was responsible for the mathematical projection when it came to the expansion of a dust cloud in space around the moon, an essential element in determining the visibility from Earth. Initially considered using a hydrogen bomb for the project, but the United States Air Force once again vetoed that idea due to the weight of such a device. Because it would be too heavy to be propelled, it was then decided to use a W-25 warhead, a small lightweight warhead with a very low 1.7 kiloton yield. The W-25 warhead would be carried by a rocket towards the shadow side of the moon, which is the twilight zone, where it would be detonated on impact. The dust cloud resulting from the explosion would be lit by the sun and therefore visible from Earth and that the launch would be feasible by 1959. But in January 1959, the project was canceled by the Air Force. If anything would have gone wrong with the launch, it would put a risk to the population. Another factor cited by the project leader, Leonard Raphael, was the possible problem of nuclear fallout, which would affect future lunar research projects and moon colonization. Out of all this, the signing of the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1963 and the Outer Space Treaty in 1967 came into play by preventing future investigations of the concept of detonating a nuclear device on the moon. By that time, both the United States and the Soviet Union had performed several high-altitude nuclear explosions, including Operation Argus, Operation Fishbowl, and the Soviet Union Project K. Many thanks for taking some time to check out this quick tutorial. All the links will be in the description below. Please subscribe so you won't miss on any important news data that is currently out there. Please make sure you check out the thumbnail that will be floating around at the end pertaining to similar content. And since this is what in the world of data, what you didn't know, 
Now you know.